G'day guys and welcome back to G-Man Speaks. Today we're going to take a look at a video by a YouTuber called Independent Man and it's called The Joys of Marriage Part 2. So this is a follow-up to another video that I did by Independent Man. I'm essentially just a bunch of guys who wrote into a Reddit thread um, and explain to the uninitiated what marriage is like for most men. Not all men, but most men. Uh, some of this is pretty funny, some of it could be a little bit depressing, um, but I think it's a good mix of content. And as always, check out his original video. The link is in the description. A man who compromises when he's wrong is wise. A man who compromises when he's right is married. And you don't need to be married for that to ring true. It's really scary how men that were once married tell me that they were always alone. Only now they are divorced. I can tell you that now as someone uh, who was probably married to someone um, who he shouldn't have been married to, I can tell you now the loneliest time in my life um, was the two years that I was married. Um, I had expectations um, that things would get better um, from when you're in the you know de facto cohabitating stage and then you go get married. Things are supposed to elevate. Things are supposed to be better. Things were the opposite way for me. Um, and... Now, it's quite evident. I've told my story uh, quite um, matter of fact for you guys. I'm not living out much in the way of details, but yeah, like she she obviously switched off uh, switched off on me um, more or less straight after we got married, um, and I was basically walking around in my house on eggshells. I could not do anything without annoying her. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't talk. I couldn't eat something while sitting on the couch. You know, just you can't do anything right, especially when a woman's turned off on you for whatever reason it may be right? It is the loneliest time and the most destroying time from a self, self-esteem self perspective for me as a man. Uh, it took me a while to come back from that sort of treatment. So that was two years um, of more or less being stonewalled. And I know a lot of guys go through this and they don't tell other guys about it because they don't want to feel like they're weak or they can't hold their, you know, their woman down or can't keep them in line and not run in the house and all this sort of shit. But really, most guys, especially in Western societies now with womanism and all that sort of jazz, you know, boss babes and over-entitled women living you know, fantasy dream lives, you know, based off what people want to live on Instagram and have those wants and needs and they're pampered. A lot of guys are now living um, like pack horses, like donkeys, like beasts of burden for women. So none of this stuff surprises me. None of this stuff in these videos at all that I read surprises me in the slightest. Day 485 without sex. No, I'm not fat or ugly. Yes, I've declined opportunities with other women in that time. No, I would not recommend that any man get married. Best advice I ever got from Stanley Bing, actually. When you have a fight with your wife, fight hard. Don't back down. You're doing her, yourself, and the world a disservice if you do. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, that's probably one reason why, um, yeah, my, my ex uh, up and left. I'd always fight hard on things that I was pretty staunch about. Uh, I'd never fold, I'd never, you know, fold or, or, or you know, fall over because uh, she putting pressure on me about a certain argument or something she wanted. I was very, always very, very firm. And, and looking back now, I think that's something that saved me from a life of misery. A lot of guys, um, I know heaps of guys who... I think the whole happy wife, happy life thing rings true. And if they just do that and they give the woman what they want and they don't be argumentative, they be agreeable, um, pamper women, they're going to get a good reward out of it. They're going to get a, the woman's going to love them more, but they don't. They just treat you like shit. You know, they lose all respect for you. It's like if you've got seen kids or you've got kids or nieces or nephews and um, they're not well brought up in terms of they haven't had boundaries put in. They, those kids are brats. It's the exact same thing. For women, women are brats. And as I always say, like most women are, are grown-ups with, you know, they're, they're adult kids with tits. Uh, there isn't much more um, from a mentality evolution standpoint that they've gone on from, from a 12-year-old, a 12-year-old girl. I've found, at least with my wife, that anything I say to her in a logical way will be reprocessed through her head to mean something other than what I've actually meant to say. I think that sometimes she does this on purpose, but I'm not sure. And staying on that theme of argumentation, 
Women still think it's cool to argue any point, no matter how trivial, to the point of making their husbands dream of suicide, no matter what age they are. There's nothing on this earth that can be worse than a lifelong power struggle with an infantile woman. It's no wonder so many men are happily letting their wives leave. I don't know if they're happily letting them leave, but when they do leave and they're free, the shackles are off. They even put out of their misery. I was put out of my misery. I would have stuck around, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. I know a lot of other guys would just put up with it. Ah, oh, that's married life. You know, you put your head in the sand. Happy wife, happy life. Ah, oh, you know, women are just C-U-N-Ts. You know, when you get married, the woman turns into a C-U-N-T, and that's just what you got to deal with, you know, to have the family and uh, keep it all together, be a man of success, at least to the outside world. Trying to argue with a woman, I would never truly argue about something that was trivial. If I was going to have an argument, it had to be over something that was important. I just wouldn't argue. I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't entertain conversations and arguments over small petty things like what you're having for dinner or what did you do around the house or whatever it was. I just wouldn't argue about it. Um, in terms of, I just wouldn't. You know, I'll just shut it down. Just you know, you need to do that. Otherwise, you're going to be nagged, harangued, browbeaten. For years and years and years until you finally either have some sort of mental break or you get chucked on the on the heap because the woman's lost that much respect for you because you become a weak little bitch. It's like, have you guys seen that movie Strictly Ballroom? You know, and then the, the wife there, she used to look up to the husband who was like a dancer and they were a dancing couple and he had a mental break and she just abuses the shit out of him the whole movie. I mean, that's how a lot of women speak to their... Um, speak to their husbands you 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 wouldn't think it it happens um once again I always talk about my mate larry larry he's the poster child for, for the for, for the abused husband uh, for someone who's been psychologically abused for like 15 years and he was married worst thing ever and guys just deal with it they don't tell anyone they suffer in silence they, they yeah they go to the bottle um you know they self-medicate through other means I love how every time men make a rational argument about the misery of their condition, the number one comeback is to accuse the guy of being afraid of something. Some cheesy 1970s female playbook they all receive secretly upon puberty must have a chapter about exploiting your man's fragile self-esteem. So we are accused of being afraid of commitment, afraid of strong, powerful women, etc, etc. If you accuse a man of being afraid, he'll do what you want to prove he is fearless just like a cute little boy. No more, bitch. Shaming tactics have been overused and are no longer effective. Yeah, it's like the whole, oh, you're a, a real man becomes a stepdad or a real man does this and looks after his woman. A real man, yada, 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 insert stupid thing that they want you to do. Very, very true. But you've got to think about it. When, when you look at the sort of mind games that women play with men, especially men that they're, They've locked down, but he has no escape. His only escape is through divorce court. And it's, uh, look, it's just as bad as being where you are. But it's like a lot of these women, when they know you, you have no way out, unless it's really going to be very painful for you, they can just do what they want. It's just a manipulation of playing on man's self-esteem, you know, playing on fragile egos, using psychological warfare to get a man to do what they want because if he if he doesn't do what you want you'll belittle him to the point where he doesn't believe in himself as a man anymore unless he does what you want him to do personally i think that's an important lesson worth paying attention to by all means if you do something shameful then you should rightfully feel ashamed but the kinds of examples outlined above are simply women trying to manipulate you into doing something they want you to do. I heard the you're afraid of commitment quite a few times when I was young, and I always felt there was something wrong with the accusation. But it took me a while to figure out what was behind it and how to articulate a response. You're afraid of commitment implies there is something wrong with you. You're not a real man, as though acquiescing to every whim of a woman makes you a real man. So instead of trying to prove that you're a real man, throw it back and say something like, I'm not afraid of commitment, but if I appear somewhat hesitant, perhaps it has something to do with you. Perhaps I'm reticent to commit to someone I don't trust 100%. Who don't even bother saying that shit. That won't be, um, that won't be taken well and saying rational well thought out and articulated a response is going to get you nowhere with, with a woman who's going to use infantile shaming tactics uh, on you.
who would resort to such manipulation tactics that you have just displayed, and who could decide at any moment to up and leave and take half of what I've been building for the last fill-in-the-blank years of my life. Oh, don't be scared, they'll say. I'll never do that to you. Some other woman must have hurt you. That's what they always say. Well, don't blame me because some other woman hurt you. I would never do that to you. How many times have you been told that after you've had something happen? Only for them to be to fuck you off out of your life if you don't give them what they want. Only after a matter of weeks of dating them. They're all the same and the majority of them are the same. It's hardwired into them. They're all running off the same sort of firmware. The, old, the, the same software is running on a little bit of a different computer. But it's always the same software is running in there. The same arguments, the same subroutines, you know, within their minds. It's incredible. As someone who womanized quite prolifically for a number of years, I can tell you now most women are the same. Most women are the same. Everything they say, all their wants, needs, um, uh, hang-ups they have with men, they're all the same. It's like a hive mind. It's like one person. And it's like legion, you know? Anyway, about halfway through, guys. Uh, if you're enjoying this content, a little bit different than usual, but if you're enjoying it, please sub to the channel. Aiming for 10K subscribers, so be part of the channel and the growth journey. And if you just want to support me, guys, just watch my video through to the end. Um, that's what YouTube values. And once again, if you do want to check out the Patreon and become a patron, um, link is in the video description. So afraid of commitment? No, I just don't want to commit to you. Women make decisions that make them feel good in the short run. They want to get rid of their husband. They don't consider the fact that after the rush of getting half his stuff, they will have to get by on less than half his income and whatever they can earn while raising the kids. Society used to protect women from their poor decisions by making divorce difficult to obtain and providing no support for disloyalty. Before the dark times, before feminism. That is very, very true thing to say. And I've noticed that with a lot of women that get divorced or leave husbands, they do it on an emotional impulse. They're not happy. They haven't been happy about something. It might not even be him, they, but they think it all relates to him and they feel if their life is bad and they're not happy when they're married to him, it must be his fault. Therefore, just leave the bastard, leave the poor bastard, fuck off on him, drag him through divorce court, ruin his life. You know, they don't give a shit. They want to go out and they want to chase other men. They think another man will do something better than what you can do but what, what or make them feel better than what you can feel. And they're going to step up and do more for them and I think that's what's going to make them happy. But what a lot of these women don't realize, especially when they're out in a dating market, they're just, uh, they're just bait for steve and Bryce's. Pumped and dumped, lied to, treated like shit, because those guys know what those women are. And it's just for recreational use. They shoot themselves in the foot. As I said, society used to somewhat try and protect women from their own choices. Now they've got full agency of everything they do, which, hey, that's fine, but there's no protection. There's no men saying, hey, maybe don't do that. Women make some very poor emotional decisions that ruin their lives. That's another point. I want to go back to the point they talked about um, men being afraid of commitment. Men aren't afraid of commitment. Men are afraid of what women will do with the power they hold over them once committed. Men aren't afraid of marriage. Men are afraid of divorce and the destruction that happens from there. Anything you do or say is twisted by them into playing their fucked up game. These people are not real. They're not human. They are just a bunch of insecurities and neuroses which manifest themselves as egotism and bullying. They will never become good. They're doomed and will doom you too by association. That is the reality. You need to get out. Now. Wow. <laughs> that is bleak. <laughs> Marriage for a man these days is handing a woman an axe, then putting his head on a chopping block in the trust that she won't cut it off. She doesn't do the same for him. That's the thing, guys. Uh, everyone thinks they And uh, me too. You think you're going to get this woman who's going to be with you through thick and thin, through the ups and the downs. They're there through the ups. They're not there through the downs a lot of the times. Um, he, that's a really great point. Putting your head on a chopping block, giving full trust, basically giving your life and putting it in someone's hand. But they don't do that for you. Uh, I'm not going to say all. Oh, there are good women who stand by their men. But the majority of them will not. They will look for a better, bigger deal. Once you're not providing what they want anymore, you'll just be discarded. You'll just be fucked off. They won't even care about you. I always say to my videos, there's nothing colder than a woman who is done with you, who has just realized there's nothing to get out of you, whether it's a commitment, a fucking baby, um, fun dates, whatever stage she is in, she, in her life and what she's aiming for, you're fucking cut off. Don't worry about that.
I got lucky, but I cannot guarantee the 26-year-old guys I work with that they will have the same results. Most seem to be considering pampered bitches as wives. Worst this is not do. good. I can't stand spending five minutes in a room with these women. They are very materialistic and self-centered. Most of my 40-ish buddies are very unhappy or divorced outright. The entire situation is rather bleak. I consider myself lucky. When I got married, I had no idea what I was getting into. You think you know, but no one can predict 10 to 20 years into the future. It's a total crapshoot. I got lucky. I admit that freely. That is refreshingly honest. You can do all the due diligence you want, and you absolutely should, but there is a big dose of luck that goes into it, as the next comment suggests. That's just luck. A lot of men do everything right, and when they marry, assure their significant other is rational, loving, into sex, etc. Whether the woman stays like that is down to luck. All a man's judgment and actions do is maximize his chances of success. A lot of women put on their best face before marriage at the subconscious level and stop making the effort afterward. That's true. They don't even do this consciously. So they seem to actually be better women beforehand rather than putting on an act. It can be almost impossible to see this kind of thing coming. If a woman, for whatever reason, changes or decides she is no longer satisfied in marriage, the man is screwed. He doesn't need to actually do anything wrong. Well, and that is uh, basically that's basically what I said, but uh, in different words, right? The old bait and switch that we all talk about, that we hear about, that's a bit of a nightmare. It's a bit of a, a horror story that you think won't happen to you. It's not your girl, not my girlfriend, G-Man, not my cute little girlfriend who is just perfect to me and loves me and basically worships the, the ground I walk on. She won't change. That was you. You, you just got a bad one. Or whoever it is. Oh, you just got a bad one. Or you're just angry because it didn't work out for you and you're being negative. I can tell you, buddy, they all change. All of them change. Think about any guy who's, who's listening to me right now. Put in the comments. Are you still getting the amount of sex you were getting when you were first together, the first one to six months? You know, it was all on. You could, you can't wait to see her. She can't wait to see you. It's action. Uh, this bloody deep throat blowjob spitting all over it. There's bloody anal back back seats of cars, bushes, trying to bang each other wherever you can, change rooms at bloody shopping centers, whatever it may be, whatever stuff they're into with you. That does not continue. That stops when you move in or even before then. It stops after about 18 months, I can tell you now. So if you think you're going to get that, you're going to be greatly, greatly dissatisfied with your life. So listen to me and heed my warning, men. I'm telling you now. What you buy, what you sign up for in that contract, when you have the trial run, you know, the test run, the test drive, which I call the, you know, the uh, exciting honeymoon phase, right? That's a test drive. That's not the real car. When you get that car at home, the doors fall off, the, the wheels, of, the tires come off and the engine drops out and the thing's fucked, but you're stuck with it because you signed up, because you signed it up on the test drive. And that's not your fault. It's what women do. As I was saying, women are the masters of manipulating men, whether they subconsciously do that or not. I think some of them do it um, to an extent um, consciously, but I think it's a subconscious thing. That it's nature, it's making women who are attracted in a certain man and want to be with a certain man, make her behave in a way that will allure a man. A man to not think, you know, do things and, and act in a certain way will not allow him to think straight. Allow him to think with critical thinking. Until that fog of the mind raging, the mind um, clouding boners and dirty blowjobs and whatever else you're getting wears off. And then, and then, guys, they end up in a position, I was there, you're sitting at home one day, you're married, you're like, I hate my life, I am trapped, I can't believe I've done this, this is my life. It's very common. Women will try to change you, it's inevitable. What you can do at the minimum is look like you are alpha. Speak loudly, stomp, make noise, don't take any shit. If she yells, yell back so she knows you won't take that. At the same time, take care of responsibilities before she thinks about them. Only then will you have a happy marriage. Yeah, great. That sounds good, doesn't it? you got to have a power struggle. In response to a 36-year-old man considering marriage, never get married. 
you're finally at the age where life starts getting really good. You can date a girl half your age and it's legal. From my experience, the 10 to 15 years age difference in a more sophisticated woman hasn't made any difference in anything. Women are now perpetual teenagers who never grow up. So you may as well get the body that matches the mind. Honestly, there are few women I can stand to listen to for more than five minutes. The level of self-absorption in American women is profound. <laughs> or what about if you're sitting next to a table of girls at a coffee shop or when you're out for dinner and you can overhear their bullshit conversations? It's absolutely vacuous. Uh, someone who's been married and have heard, um, you know, she's had all the girls around for coffees and drinks or whatever it is, and I'm in the next room and I can hear all the bullshit they're talking and laughing and cackling about. It's just mind-numbingly stupid, <laughs> really. It is vacuous. It is immature and a lot of it is mean-spirited oh that's funny and if that makes me a bad person i honestly don't give a shit so you call their bluff you'd think going without sex for a while was some kind of intolerable torture pop in a porn rub one out you'll survive and you'll have cut off that source of power she has over you freedom always comes at a price pay it willingly the irony is that if withholding sex gets her what she wants with you, she'll only do it more often. Make it irrelevant to her getting what she wants, and she'll stop using that tactic. You're just creating a rod for your own back with your short-sightedness. Think with the big head for a change. I think Bill Burr has a bit about that where he talks about just rubbing one out. Well, Bill Burr got married. But yeah, it's one of those, I've never had a woman withhold sex because they wanted me to do something for it. It's like they just turn off and don't want to fuck you at all because they just want nothing to do with you anymore. Once they switch off, there's no fake in it. My advice for all you beaten down, miserable guys stuck with some fucking Twinkie eating American Idol extreme makeover watching annoying bitch is get the fuck out. Take your life back. I'm not tooting my own shit, but since I've gotten divorced, I've gotten into two NBA schools, haven't picked yet, played in seven beach volleyball tournaments, and about three months into a fucking marathon training program. Yes, I miss the easy, consistent quality sex. No, I do not miss just about... I'm not going to have that. It's got the C word in there, and I will get taken down if that's in there. But that is very true. But I don't know what this guy's talking about, having consistent action. Like I said, most, most married guys or even guys who live with their girlfriends are not getting consistently jack shit, especially after a couple of years. You're getting consistently fuck all. Unless you're lucky, I guess. And that's, you know, it's not a sad state of affairs. You're lucky that you're getting consistent sex off your missus. To those who aren't married, one key thing. Take a good look at the girl's mother. She will invariably become just like her mother. You'll want to believe this isn't the case for your sweet little thing. You're wrong. Completely wrong. Bank on it. A bad advice there. An earlier post said to look at the mother to see what the girlfriend will end up being. That's true enough, but look at the father as well. If he appears worn down and henpecked, then take a good look at your own future. Great advice. For 19 years I've been tracking married couples where I work, people I socialise with, etc. 85% or so, the women have become fat, sexless hogs and the men are miserable. If you have one of the 15%, be thankful on a daily basis. <sighs> Face it, women are selfish. All the wedding and receptions I see now are really just a celebration by the woman for the glorification of herself. What guy would go spend 20 grand or more on a wedding? Fuck, hey. we'd buy a monster big screen TV and power tools for the basement. American women are so selfish they really don't give a fuck about the man. To them, it's all about me, 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 and you better work harder to give it to them. Thank God I'm not married, but I look at friends who are and just go... You poor bastard. Hey, that couldn't ring any more true. So, oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. I went and spent over 45 grand um, on, a, on a winery wedding. That was only for like 85 people or something. But we had all the bells and whistles and all that because she wanted it. Um, she was being an absolute C-U-N-T um, throughout the whole process, the whole uh, wedding planning bullshit. You know, I, sh I should have run for the hills. So I was hating life already then. Um, but, yeah, spending 45 grand on a day. For me, I look back now and I don't know how I did it. I did it begrudgingly and I was the one who was paying for that. Um, and my dad gave me a little bit of money back then to help out as well and chip in. But her side of the family didn't help and she didn't put a cent in. 
Um, she got all the benefit, all the photos and coffee book, photo books and photog- expensive photographers and photo booths and flowers and all the yada, 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 all the shit you don't need to have a good time. Um, she got all that because everybody else had it. So she had to have it too because it was wedding season. But there, you're paying all this money for something for a lot of the time. You're paying to have a party, a huge sum of money to have a party to celebrate you being imprisoned, putting in a jail. Not every guy, I reckon, but I reckon it's nine out of ten guys. Hate it. Hate their life. They'll never admit it though, because men are very proud and men will never say to you that they hate being married to their wife because that is a huge biggest sign for a man to lose like feeling of a losing face to the boys. Yeah, I've always thought this about weddings. It's her day. You just show up in your penguin suit to play your bit part. I've never understood how this makes any rational economic sense. But then again, I guess that's the point. The modern wedding is a female fantasy based on pure emotion and completely divorced from any rational considerations. I know two guys, both make good money, are good looking and great dads. Their wives are depressed, putting on weight, don't work outside the home, want him to take the kids or start working as soon as he walks in the door. One goes out and gets massages and her nails done and wants a cleaning lady. Like, what the fuck? Is this some sort of full-time vacation for her? Man, the dudes are like perfect husbands and they treat them like dirt. I feel sorry for you bastards. I know, it hurts, I don't have kids. But that can be a fantasy gone bad too these days. Just go to any mall. Go look at blokes who have taken their families out a lot of the time. They've got a family trip and they've bundled them up in a van somewhere and they've taken them out to SeaWorld and the guy just looks so worn down. Going on stupid holidays he doesn't want to be on. Living a life he doesn't want to live because he wanted to have the dream that he thought he was going to get and it turned out to be uh, an imprison, imprisonment. I think it's great if people have got good families and happy wives, but I think that's the, the majority, uh, minority. Um, I know a lot of guys who have um, very, very poor uh, family lives due to like divorces and issues with kids and all sorts of stuff. There's several several guys close to me, and it's it's really uh, eye opening um, for me to realise that for me that was the best decision I could have made for myself. Just cut a huge bit of risk out that things could go bad and be hating my life, you know, even more than what I did through the whole divorce period. I, I know it can get a lot worse than what I had, and. I'm not going to make the same mistake again. Seeing what life is like, you know, literally first-hand experience, seeing what life is like for a lot of guys with kids or who've been divorced with kids and just how bad that is, and then going and doing it. I did the marriage thing thinking it was different for me. Um, but, you know, live and learn and learn from others' mistakes once you realize that, you know, you're nothing special. Bad shit happens to you too. All right, guys, look, I'm probably going to leave it there. It's been quite a long video, or like 27 minutes in or so. If you've enjoyed it, um, yeah, please sub to the channel. Um, and thank you very much for watching this far through. I really appreciate your time. Um, it means a lot to me that you're watching all my content. Um, and please go check out his original video, the link in the video description. Cheers.